Good afternoon. My name is Ken Fritz, and I am a proud member of the NRA. Anybody else out there? Ooh. That was pretty weak. <laughs> I'm going to ask that question again. When I ask it this time, I want a loud yes. I want it so loud. You know those little gals that were downstairs before? And they were handing out stuff, and they were dressed in those little gold things. And there's a lot of guys up here. Yeah, guys are going, well, I wasn't looking at that. So I want one of those girls downstairs right now. They're probably sorting stuff out. I want them to go, what was that? That's how loud I want it to be, OK? So once again, I am a proud member of the NRA. Anybody else out there? Yes! yes! Dynamite. Oh, man. This is going to be fun. Are you alive? Life member. How many life members? Yeah! We're living a good life. Aren't we? How many people are proud to be in the NRA? One, two, three. Yes! yes! Dynamite. That little girl downstairs is going, what was that? Okay. We, again, my name is Ken Fritz. It's, it's up there right now, and it says Ken Fritz. And here's the problem. I think that what we're going to talk about is about you guys being in the front line is really important. And I say at the beginning of all the seminars I ever give, I say, I'm really proud and, got, and I'm happy to be here. And people think I don't mean that. They think I say that because I have to say that. Because if I don't say that, all the people in the audience are going to think that I don't like them. And then my evaluations are going to suffer. That's what they think. Nothing could be farther from the truth. When John called me up and he asked, would I like to do something involving the NRA and being here at this meeting, I couldn't wait. I love doing this. I live by the axiom, if you ever find a job you love, you'll never work another day in your life. That's true. It's the truth, and trust me, I'm not working today. I'm having a great time. <coughs> Sean, I, I was talking with Sean, and I knew this was going to happen. I'm sitting here, and I'm talking to you guys right now. And as I'm talking to you, I can see this veil of confusion coming over your face. And the reason why this veil of confusion is there is because you're thinking to yourself, he looks like somebody else. He looks like, oh, what's that guy's name? And it's unfortunate. Let me help you here. Over the last 15 years, I guess I've had 150, uh, maybe 200 people come up to me, usually during a break, and they say, you know, you look exactly, I mean, you look exactly like Tom Cruise. <laughs> That's what they tell me. You're a lot better. And I, you know, here's the deal. I don't know if it's the haircut and the smile of the bill. I don't know what it is, but people see me. And, and now you're all straightened out. You've got, you can focus on what I'm about to say. You're all straightened out, but there's people out there who didn't just hear that. So they're going to see me out there later on, and they're going to be looking at me. Oh, Tom! Tom Cruise! Just tell them to be quiet. It's Ken Fritz. I am so sick and tired of signing autographs. I, I don't like doing that, so please, let them know. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about you being a frontline supervisor. And before we do that, or a frontline for the NRA, before we do that, I just need to tell you a little bit about me. Otherwise, I'm just a guy standing up front with a clicker and slide. And that's all there is to it. I started my career off in the United States Air Force. I did that for 20 years. I flew jets. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I flew jets. I flew fighters, to be exact. I flew F-111s. Did that for 20 years. Pretty interesting. If anybody wants to talk about that later, we can. After I retired, I became a, a chairman or uh, I'm sorry, the chief of the Compounds Command Group at the Joint Forces Staff College in Norfolk, Virginia. Did that for eight years, and then from that point on, I became an independent contractor. I travel around the United States, and I give presentations on leadership, time management, organization, diversity, several other things which you don't care about, and that's what I do for a living, and I truly enjoy it. I became an NRA certified instructor about 10 years ago, and I truly enjoy that. So if you add up all the numbers, I've got about 28 years of supervisory or management experience, and then I've got about, a big number, about 30 years of education and training. So I'm coming at you today from that position. Now, as, a, as a, an instructor, I know that we've got a lot of hurdles that we have to get over. I want to talk about some of those things. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the NRA and what is it. Here's a definition. You can find this on Wikipedia. And it's pretty good, actually. It gives us a pretty good a functional definition of what the NRA is and what we're supposed to be doing. There's something in there that I think is really important. Let me blow it up for you. Is that not what we do? You bet. We promote firearm competency, safety, and in this case, ownership. 
That's what we do. And guess what, folks? Guess what? You are doing that. You're on the front end of this whole thing. There's nobody else doing this. I'm going to show you an analogy between fighter pilots and NRA instructors, and you are exactly the same. Hard to believe? Take a look at this. When you take a look at a fighter pilot versus an NRA instructor, we all start off with supporting backgrounds. The fighter pilot starts off, in my case, it was the United States Air Force. And they were the guys that had the big strategic plans. Those are the guys that tell us exactly what's going to be done with the Air Force materials and personnel. Following that, right above me, was the wing commander. The wing commander was the guy who was in control of maybe four or five fighter squadrons on his base. Right below him was the squadron commander. That was my guy. He was immediately, I mean, right above me. He was talking to me on a regular basis, telling me what we were going to do, how we were going to do it. He was the guy, as a good supervisor, was making sure that I, in fact, had all the obstacles taken away. Following that, we have maintenance. Maintenance is designed to take care of all the jets, make sure that they are in good shape. <coughs> make sure that all the proper parts are ordered to make sure that everything we need for that jet to run is up and ready. And this is, by the way, whether, it's, whether we're just practicing or combat. Next after that, we have logistics. Logistics is probably the most important thing. It's the most misunderstood for the military. If you don't have good logistics, you're not going to win a war. Period. That's the, that through logistics is how we get all the parts. That's how we get all the gas. That's how we get the bonds that go on jets that we drop. Right below that, you take a look and it should have, this says, geez, loaders. loaders. <laughs> Don't worry, Darren, I'm coming back. The loaders are the guys who are important because they understand bonds. It's a good thing. Because if you don't understand them, they can go off. We don't like that unless they're being dropped. These are people who are skilled in putting them on planes. Following that, we have a crew chief who is directly responsible for the jet that I go out and get into for that day. That's his job. Do you have gas? Are the bombs already loaded? Are all the pneumatics pumped up? That's his job. And then, lo and behold, there's me. I am the pointy edge of the spear. I'm the one who's going to go out, catch this, for 20 years. For 20 years, I was paid to kill people and break things. Yay me! <laughs> yeah, you're, you're plugging now, but you know, when after you retire, it's pretty hard to find a job where people are looking for people to do that. Oh, you kill people and break things? Unless you're talking to a mafia boss, they don't really care. So here I am. I'm the one going out and dropping bombs on the bad people, okay? But think about this. I go out to uh, whatever, country X, and I go out and I find bad people, and I go drop bombs on them. The next day, when I come back, do you think for a second that they are looking at me coming at them, and they're saying, oh boy, here comes Ken again. Jeez, I hope he doesn't bomb me. No. What they're saying is, here comes a freaking Air Force again. And they're running away because they don't want to get bombed. I am in their face. Uh, let's follow some more logic over here. To the right-hand side, take a look at the instructor. You've got the NRA in and of itself, designed for strategic thought. What are we doing? How are we going to do it? What's the best way we can do it? How can we use our money to the best of our knowledge? Following that, you've got the ILA staff. These folks are all about a Second Amendment, making sure that what we're doing stands up and people don't trample our rights. That seems to be pretty important to me. Following that, right under those guys, you have our analysis. Not analysis. You've got advisors that go up in Congress. Some people call them lobbyists. I don't care who you call them or what you call them. Those people need to talk to our Congress, to the senators, to the House of Representatives, because quite frankly, they don't get it all the time. Sometimes they need an explanation. We'll help them with that. Imagine. Somebody up here said, imagine that. <laughs> Gee. Then we're looking at our membership staff, and those are the people that we are asking to take care of getting more people on board. When you go out and you give instruction and people join the NRA, these are the people they talk to first. These are the people that sign up and get, them, get our dues for them. In addition to that, we have the, the next people that fall. You can't even see the slide at all, can you, Mike? 
<laughs> training staff, guys like John, they make sure that we have the materials required to do our job. Now that's not so easy. I've done a lot of training. I've done a lot of education. I can tell you, putting together programs such as the one that you have to work with takes a lot of time, a lot of expertise, and you're given. Which really helps you. You are now the bloody edge of the spear. You are the ones that are heading face to face, eyeball to eyeball, with the individuals throughout the United States. And you know what? That's okay. Because you make the first impression. John mentioned to you just a little while ago that when we were out there, we were actually instructing, people look at us as the NRA. Not Ken Fritz, not Joe Bag of Donuts, not Sally Cream Cheese. You are the NRA. And they look at you like that. So how do we represent ourselves? And how do, we, how do we do that to the best of our knowledge? I've got seven things I'd like to talk to you about. I realize that we have instructors out here who have been doing this for a long time. I make no bones about that. I also realize we have instructors out here who may not have been doing it for very long and who are not, honestly, not comfortable standing up and doing what I'm doing right now. Do you know that speaking in public is the number one fear over death? Over death? Think about this. Next time you go to a funeral and you're standing around looking at people, think, more people would rather be in the box than give the eulogy. <laughs> so a lot of people don't like doing what we're doing right now. I understand that, but there are certain things that we can do to help you that will make you better. <coughs> Item number one, know the words. You've got to know the words. You know what? This book, this is the latest version. Okay, this is going to change. Before you step up in front of a bunch of people, you need to read this at least three times cover to cover. You need to know what's in the book, because if you don't know what's in the book, how are you going to give the program? When you take a look at the program that's given to you by the NRA instructors already, that's out there for you, you need to go over that and be comfortable with it. I've also added something over here. It says, the correct word. <coughs> Is anybody familiar with George Carlin? <laughs> Do you know where I'm going? He, 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 had, he had a particular program that he put together, and it's the seven, the seven words that you never use in public. Do not watch that before you give an NRA presentation. Because <laughs> that will stick in your mind. And you know, you, you know, sometimes we make a mistake, and something goes wrong, and you sit there and you say, oh, shoot! Only, only you didn't say shoot, okay? Or that freaking thing! Only you didn't say that freaking thing, okay? We can't afford that. I spend my life in front of people all the time, audiences just like you. If I were to slip up like that, I am so screwed, because I've just set an example that I don't want. And the NRA doesn't want it either. So please, take your time. Put your program together and make sure you understand what the right words are. Demonstrations. I don't doubt for a second that there isn't a person in this room who couldn't break down a 1911 like that. I don't doubt that for a second. If you're teaching, whether it's pistols or rifles or whatever you're teaching, I am sure you know how to do it. You've probably been doing it for years. Okay. Because you understand it, know how to do it does not mean that you can give a demonstration with ease. And what happens is, the first time you get up and try to give this demonstration, you break one of the first rules that we have. What, does anybody remember our first rule for the NRA? Always keep your gun pointed in a safe direction. Okay. Practice your demonstrations, you need to practice them over and over again until they become second nature. Until they just fall with ease. And if it doesn't go right, stop and restart. But you have to do that. Second, our third thing is stand up. I have seen instructors. I have seen this happen. They sat behind a desk and flipped through the book. And as they're flipping through the book, they hold up the gun. Wow, I'm impressed. I really felt like grabbing a guy and rearranging his apparel. I was so mad that he was doing that. But I had he was just an instructor who happened to be in a building that I was in giving a class. We need to stand up. Whenever I give presentations on how to give presentations, one of the things I always tell them, I don't care if you're in a room with three people, you stand up. And the reason why you stand up is to take command of the audience. 
I don't care if it's two, three, four, five people. Stand up. <coughs> we're pretty happy with what we're doing. You should know the test. Right now, you folks have got a test out there, and it, as far as I remember, it's a 50 question test. You should know the test. Repeat, know oh, the test. Do not teach the test. We need to know it. And the reason why you need to know it is so that when somebody comes to you about a question, you can answer them. Anybody who's given this course one time understands that they've given a test and people come back and they say, well, I don't understand that, that's not right. What I did when I first started was I went through the test and I found every answer in the book. And I labeled it and so that when people came up and said, well, number five is not right, I, I, I got that wrong. I could just turn to the page. After a while, you get to know where the pages are. After a while, you look like you know what you're talking about. Why? Because you do. But you need to know the test. Don't blow smoke. We're not talking about smoking, okay? We're talking about blowing smoke. If you don't know the answer to something, folks, just say it. And here's how I do it. You know, that's really an interesting question. That's never been asked to me quite like that before. Let's, and we're putting two words together, let us, let's look that up together. And then you just go through the book and you find it. Why is it so easy to find? Because you've read it at least three times cover to cover. But let's give them the impression. Not the impression. Let's show them. Let's exemplify that we know what we're talking about. Very important on that one. Oh, boy. Come dressed for the occasion. You're the ambassador for the NRA, right? Now, if you guys, I mean, you know, some of you out there probably like wearing red three-inch spike heels with a short dress and all that stuff. This is not the venue for it. And women, that goes for you too. <laughs> I don't wear the short dress, but I do wear the heels. Dress appropriately. Yeah, and I'm not telling you you have to go out and you have to buy an NRA shirt. You don't. But when you step up in front of somebody and you're not representing yourself, but you're representing the NRA, I've had this one for I don't know how many years. I use it all the time. It works great. Clean jeans. Not the jeans that you use to change the oil in your 1957 Chevy pickup truck. Because you can smell the oil on them. It's got to be clean. You've got to look the part. And for shoes, you know, depending. If you're going to give the class and then you're going to go out and shoot, well, wear, wear appropriate shoes. But look the part. And probably the most important of anything, when you're standing up in front of people, or if you're helping them on the range, whatever it is, you have got to show them. You have got to prove to them that you care. There's an old adage which says, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So this is the time for you to show them. And you know, you've got, I don't know about you, but for me, when I took somebody who is absolutely infantile in a game of shooting, um, my daughter was 14 years old, and she wanted to learn how to shoot. Oh, I mean, she was like this big. And so here she is out on the range, and I took her from never having fired a pistol at all. In about three hours, we went from that to shooting a 357. True, it was loaded for 38 rounds. But she was shooting that comfortably. But you have to show them and prove to them that, you know, I care about you. So when somebody says, Boy, I'm not so sure I want to shoot this. <gasps> Bam! You don't look at them and say, Don't be such a wuss! Hold the gun! It's not that bad! It's only a 44 Magnum for crying out loud! <laughs> but it hurt my hand. I don't care! No. What we want to do is we want to start them right off and ask them, How are you feeling about this? Well, I'm a little nervous. Okay, what are you nervous about? Well, it's going to make a big noise. No, it's not. Because we're going to start you off with a 22 and this is what's going to happen. But you spend time with them and you show them they, that you care and all of a sudden they put all their trust in you. Mr. and Mrs. NRA, they just did that. The NRA needs your, all these things. It needs those things, your energy and experience. They need your time. There's no question about that. But they also need, and most of all, they need your support. And when I talk about support in this venue, what I'm talking about is yes, we do need you as instructors. And yes, it's going to be blended, and you're going to probably doing more of the mechanics of how to shoot. And we need you to do that. 
But we also need you in other ways. We need you to be the, part, the type of person for the NRA that supports the NRA, pay your dues on time, get your certifications, do all of that stuff so that people know that you really are a member of the NRA. And by the way, when people start talking about the NRA and guns and rights and all those things, this is your chance to be assertive. Do not, you don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to be the guy that stands on the table and yells and screams at people, you don't understand what you're talking about, and you're just some liberal, never mind some of the words, as, as some people might say. You don't have to say that. And you don't want to be a mamby-pamby passive person. It's okay. I think it's okay if you have guns, I think. No, but with, you need to be calm, collected, informed, knowledgeable, and quietly just, just tell them what they're after, which is education. That's what you're after. That's what you want to give them. So what have you learned today? Practice makes better. It never makes perfect. There's, nothing, there's no such thing as perfect. But practicing your material is going to help you. You are the first impression of people for the NRA. Care about the people, care about what you're doing, and it will show and support what you believe. And there's one more thing that I didn't say. I am available. Here's my information. I give it out, I've got my cards up here. When I'm done, when we're done today, at the end of all of this, I'm gonna be here and I'll answer any questions you have about giving presentations, about how to do it, about things that might help you break some of the problems that you might have giving presentations. I'm more than glad to help you. Phone number's up there, you can call at any time. If you send me an email, I will answer it, usually within 24 hours, latest is 48. Just say that you were at the NRA annual convention and I know where it came from. <coughs> so, one more time. I am a proud member of the NRA. Anybody else out there? Yes! yes! Dynamite. Thanks very much, I appreciate it.